Now, another um, very important factor in the causation of colorectal cancer is family history. Now, there are several sorts of family history that one has to look out for. One is what we call a direct autosomal dominant inheritance for colorectal cancer. These are rare, occurs in less than 2% of all colorectal cancer. There are two main groups. One is what we call FAP, it stands for familial, which means family. Adenomatous, which means there's lots of this adenomas. Uh, polyposis, which means that there is a lot of polyps within the colon. Now, this is inherited directly from either the father or the mother, the gene. And once the gene is inherited, uh, children by the age of 10 plus, the second decade of life, will start growing polyps. And many of these children, if they inherited the gene, by the time uh, they reach the end of second decade, that is 18, 19, 20, many of them will have developed colorectal cancer. The other sort of uh, autosomal dominant inherited pattern we see is what we call a poids jagus. Poids jagus patients will have black pigmentation on the lips, on the palms of their hand, on the soles of their feet, and they also have polyps within the small and large intestine. These are also prone to develop cancer. The other sort of family are those uh, that don't have polyps, uh, but they have many f members within the family who may develop cancer. We use a very simple criteria to let people know whether they come from such families. I call it the 3 to 1 criteria. 3 stands for at least 3 persons in a family with colorectal cancer. 2 stands for 2 generations. So for example, grandparents and parents, or parents and children. Now 1 means there's at least one person who got cancer before the age of 50. Now if you do come from this sort of family, then you've got to be specially careful. Now, having said that, I also like to reiterate that although cancer family is very important, but 80% of all cancer or colorectal cancer sufferers do not have a family history.